Now to the man and woman accused of kidnapping J.C. Dugard and holding her hostage for 18 years. Philip and Nancy Garrido were in court yesterday. J.C. was not there, but there was another woman sitting in that room, a woman who was abducted by Garrido 30 years ago and repeatedly raped when he held her in the hidden part of a storage unit. She only escaped after a suspicious policeman knocked at the door and she ran naked and screaming to her freedom. Ryan Owens was there for the encounter. Nancy Garrido smiled at her attorney as she walked into the courtroom. Not far behind, her husband Philip, who no doubt saw a familiar face there too, that of a woman he terrorized 33 years ago. Katie Hall says Garrido looked right at her. Garrido kidnapped the then 25-year-old Hall outside of a grocery store, repeatedly raped her while holding her as a prisoner in a storage unit. When a suspicious police officer happened to knock on the door, she screamed and ran naked into the street. Hall says she came to this hearing to make sure Garrido is put away for life for what he and his wife are accused of doing to J.C. Dugard. The two are charged with kidnapping Dugard from a Northern California bus stop when she was just 11. They allegedly held her captive in their backyard for the next 18 years, repeatedly raping her. Philip Garrido allegedly fathered Dugard's two children. The Garritos were only out of their jail cells for a few minutes for this hearing. Their trial is still at least a year away. And legal experts say J.C. Dugard will almost certainly be the star witness. J.C. Uh, fully understands that if it does come to a trial, uh, she will testify and she's prepared to do that if necessary. The simplest way to prove uh, the charges is simply to have JC sit on the stand, point to Philip Garrido and say that's the man who kidnapped me. The details of her captivity, how she survived, that can wait for court. For Good Morning America, Ryan Owens, ABC News, Placerville, California. And what could it have been like for Katie Calloway Hall to be in that room all those years later, looking at the man who raped her? I talked to her just moments ago. Katie, good morning to you. And as we begin, I want to put up the picture of the man that you testified against 30 years ago as he looked then. Yesterday, when you walked in and saw him all these years later, what did you see in his face? Oh, I saw the same, the same creepy, haunted look that I looked at for eight hours in that mini warehouse. It was, it was much scarier than I thought it would be. Something, re in, something inside me reacted on a gut level. It shocked me. Did you make eye contact with Philip Garrido? I did. I did make eye contact with him, and I just... I just, it felt like I made eye contact with him for a long time, but as uh, everyone else tells me, it was just for a few seconds. It felt like an eternity, and I just glared back at him and, and just wanted to let him know I was there. Looking at him took you back to that storage unit? It did. It took me back to whatever happened in that storage unit all those years ago, which are some things that are so personal that as I've said before, I blocked him out. You tried to send him away, thought you had for 50 years uh, for the kidnapping and life for the rapes, but he was released after just a few years. At this point, sitting in this courtroom, do you feel that you're getting a chance to do it again, to do what you initially tried to do? I feel that I've been given another chance and I am determined to see it through. And I don't know how much clout I'll have, but I'm determined to be watching and to be asking questions. And I'm going to re-register with the Victim Witness Program, and uh, so I will be notified when he goes to prison of everything that's going on with that man, you know, if he should be moved from one prison to the next, if he should, uh, God forbid, escape, or come up for parole in the future. And, and this isn't a short-term thing. I'm going to be watching so that 10 years down the road, he doesn't slip through the cracks again like he did with me. J.C. Dugard, have you spoken with her? Have you communicated with her? Not at all. No, I'm sure she's got her plate full right now. J.C. Dugard's attorney has said that she will testify in court if he goes to trial. Sitting in the courtroom yesterday, did you think of what you would like to say to her about the moment she testifies? Well, in my own case, uh, it was very difficult. You know, they say that, that lots of times the, 
the victim doesn't like to look at the attacker when they're in the courtroom. And I had that problem. I, I, I just would not look at him. I looked straight at the attorney and I talked to the attorney and I would advise her to do the same thing because she just she needs to get her story out and she needs not to be uh, impaired in that way emotionally. Well, again, Katie, so good of you to be with us at this early hour, and we'll stay in touch with you as this progresses. Thank you. Thank you, Diane.